Welcome to Lesson 9F, Introduction to Turbine Performance. In this lesson, we'll discuss various types of turbines, and we'll define some non-dimensional turbine parameters and do an example problem with them. Here's some terminology. Turbine is a general term, like pump is a general term. A turbine is any device that extracts mechanical energy from a fluid, usually converting it to rotating energy of a wheel or a shaft. For liquids, we call them hydraulic turbines or hydroturbines. For gases, we call them wind turbines, gas turbines, or steam turbines. And just as with pumps, there are two basic types of turbine, positive displacement turbines and dynamic turbines. These are similar to pumps, except for turbines, the rotating blades are called runner blades or buckets instead of impellers, which is what we call them for pumps. In general, positive displacement turbines are used for flow measurement, not for power production. Dynamic turbines can be used for either. Let's talk about positive displacement turbines first. This is a nutating disk flow meter that many of you may have in your house to measure the flow of water coming into your house. There's a nutating disk that kind of wobbles up and down as it rotates, as illustrated here in this cutaway view. There's a certain amount of volume that comes into this fixed volume or lobe, and as it wobbles and rotates, it pushes that flow out. There are other versions of this. Here's a turbine with a double helical three-lobed impeller. The output shaft of this is not producing any power. Rather, it's a flow meter, so the shaft turns some kind of counting device or tachometer. We'll spend more time on dynamic turbines. This is very similar to dynamic pumps, so I'll go through this quickly. Dynamic turbines do not have closed volumes, like positive displacement turbines do. Instead, they have spinning blades called runners or buckets that transfer the kinetic energy. Dynamic turbines can be used for flow measurement or power production. Here's an example of a flow meter to measure the speed of air. And here's one that measures the volume flow rate of water. The rotational speed of this turbine is calibrated so that this device measures volume flow rate on the readout. As far as dynamic turbines go, there are two main types, impulse turbines and reaction turbines. Let's talk about impulse turbines first. In an impulse turbine, fluid is sent through a nozzle that impinges on the rotating buckets. Impulse turbines require high head, but work with a small volume flow rate. The most common is a Pelton wheel, an example of which is shown here. The water jet would be coming from the left, and turning the wheel this way. The shaft is then attached to a generator. I have two schematics. This top one is in the absolute frame of reference, and the bottom one is in the rotating frame of reference, rotating with the turbine. We have very high head or high pressure water coming from an upper reservoir. We send it through a nozzle so we have a jet impinging on these buckets. This gives it a lot of momentum that turns the bucket. As you may recall when we studied the momentum equation with control volumes, you get more force transferred to the bucket by turning the flow. That's why the buckets are shaped kind of like cups. Here's a cool picture of the jet hitting a bucket, generally splits in half, and then is turned almost 180 degrees on either half, imparting the most momentum to the bucket as possible. And of course, this is rotating with an axis this way. And as this bucket moves, the next bucket is ready to receive the jet. We see that here as the Pelton wheel keeps turning. The design of the bucket in these Pelton wheel turbines is critical to get as much momentum as possible to transfer to the rotating wheel. Reaction turbines are very different. Instead of jets, the reaction turbine fills a volute with swirling water. The volute is this scroll case. The flow enters guide vanes, which they call stay vanes, and then these gates called wicked gates. The wicked gates are adjustable vanes that control the volume flow rate through the turbine. You can also close them off to shut the turbine down for maintenance. Compared to impulse turbines like a Pelton wheel, reaction turbines require a lower head, but a higher volume flow rate. These are the most common ones used in hydroelectric dams. The rotating turbine part itself consists of runner blades that receive flow from the wicket gates and turn the turbine. Here's a side view. Flow comes through this volute and it narrows down as it goes around through the runner blades and then out the bottom. This part is connected to the generator. In most designs, the turbine is mounted vertically as shown here with the generator on top. In a previous lesson, we discussed diffusers. The diffuser at the bottom of a hydro turbine is called a draft tube, where it not only expands the flow, 
but typically also turns at 90 degrees to discharge into the tail race or the lower reservoir downstream of the dam. Just want to mention that in some modern Francis mixed flow hydro turbines, the flow actually exits with swirl that's opposite the direction of the turbine itself. The turbine is spinning this way. The exit comes around the opposite way. Why would they do that? Well, it's similar to the Pelton wheel where we tried to turn the water 180 degrees. We can extract more momentum from the water by having some reverse swirl. Here's a typical setup for a hydroelectric plant. We talked about net head for pumps. For a dam like this, there's a gross head. Gross head is defined as the elevation difference between the water surface upstream and the water surface downstream. But there's a huge pipe called a penstock, and there are major and minor losses through this. So the head actually available to the turbine is lower than H gross. We call this the net head. If you put a total pressure probe, as illustrated here, this height would be the EGL. And if you do the same at the bottom, you would have another EGL out. Here's the draft tube. In 3D, this part actually expands out of the page significantly so that the area here is much bigger than the area here. The draft tube is a combination of an elbow and a diffuser. I'll do a quick review of turbine efficiency. We define turbine efficiency as the shaft power over the water horsepower, or BHP over rho GH V dot. We always define efficiency as actual output over required input so that eta is between 0 and 1. Compared to a pump, turbine efficiency is the reciprocal of pump efficiency because in a pump we're putting in brake horsepower to get water horsepower out, whereas for a turbine the shaft power or the brake horsepower is our desired output and we need more water horsepower to get it. In either case, these efficiencies must be less than 1. Turbine efficiencies can actually be quite large. I've worked on turbines where the efficiency was greater than 95%. Among reaction turbines, there are four main types depending on the geometry. The first one is called a Francis radial turbine because the flow enters the runner radially. The second one is called a Francis mixed flow turbine because the flow enters at an angle that's in between radial and axial. This third one is called a propeller mixed flow turbine. It's a mixed flow for the same reason that B is a mixed flow. The difference between a propeller and a Francis turbine is this band. In either of these Francis turbines, the band rotates with the turbine or the runner, whereas with the propeller type, there is no band. Finally, the last one is a propeller axial flow turbine. It's a propeller because there's no band, and the flow enters axially and leaves axially. I spent a year on sabbatical working at American Hydro in York, Pennsylvania. And here are some pictures from American Hydro. This is a Francis radial flow hydro turbine. You see that the leading edge of the runner blades is vertical, so the flow enters radially. This one is a Francis mixed flow hydro turbine where the flow enters some angle between radial and axial. These blades have a very contorted shape where the flow discharges out this trailing edge of the bucket as it spins. I did some CFD modeling of a Francis mixed flow turbine and here's an example showing pressure contours. Finally here's a propeller hydro turbine. This one has five blades. The flow enters and exits axially into the page. Now let's look at dimensional analysis and dimensionless parameters for turbines. I'll go through this quickly since the parameters and even their names end up being identical to those we discussed for pumps capacity coefficient, head coefficient, and power coefficient. The main difference is that for pumps the goal is volume flow rate, whereas for turbines the goal is power output. You may recall for pumps we had CH equal a function of CQ, CP equal a function of CQ, and eta was a function of CQ. For turbines, since our goal is brake horsepower, we evaluate instead CQ is a function of CP, CH is a function of CP, and eta is a function of CP. In the lingo of dimensional analysis, CP is the independent pi for turbines, whereas CQ is the independent pi for pumps. We scale turbines like we scale pumps with homologous points. It's really the same procedure except for the change of independent pi. Let's do an example to illustrate. We have an existing hydro turbine A with water at 20 degrees C. Here's the diameter, the RPM, the brake horsepower, 
volume flow rate, and the net head. We're designing a new turbine, B, that's geometrically similar, uses the same water, has the same RPM, but a higher head. Dam B is a higher dam than dam A. We want to calculate the diameter of the runner for turbine B and its volume flow rate when turbine B operates at a homologous point. And we want to calculate the brake horsepower and estimate the efficiency of both turbines. At homologous points, the two turbines are dynamically similar, so we apply the affinity laws. I typed these out to save some time. Here's the head coefficient for turbine A, and we set that equal to the head coefficient for turbine B. Since they're homologous, they have the same CP, CQ, and CH. So equating CHA and CHB, we can solve for the diameter of turbine B. And like we did with pumps, as long as we use either omega or n dot in both the numerator and denominator, we can use RPM n dot instead of angular speed in radians per second. We plug in the numbers from this equation, dA, ratio of RPMs. In this example, they're the same. By the way, the RPMs generally fixed because we're tying this into the electric grid, which in the United States is 60 hertz. Then we have square root of HB over HA. We get this answer, or to three digits, dB should be 2.26 meters. Similarly, we equate the capacity coefficients. Setting CQA equals CQB, we get this result. We plug in our numbers to solve for V dot B. It's equal to V dot A, the ratio of RPMs, the ratio of diameters cubed, and we get V dot B is 523 meter cubed per second. This is significantly higher than V dot A, so in times of drought, you'd be draining this dam pretty quickly. But how much have we increased the power? Using the power coefficient, we equate CPA to CPB, and we get this expression for BHPB. So BHPB is BHPA, the ratio of the densities, since this is the same liquid at the same temperature, rho B is rho A. But you can use these equations even if you have different liquids. Here the RPM is also the same, but we can use these equations for different RPMs. We put in our ratio of RPMs cubed, which is just one here, and then the ratio of diameters to the fifth power, and I get BHPB is 462 megawatts to three digits, which is more than twice the power, even though our turbine is not that much larger. It's because of this big exponent five here. Finally, the efficiency is calculated, and I typed it all out, including the unit conversions. When I plug in the numbers, I get 92.5% and 92.5% for turbines A and B, respectively. You shouldn't be surprised that these are the same. We expect that A to turbine A equal A to turbine B, since A and B are homologous points. As I said when we discussed pumps in a previous lesson, this kind of dimensional analysis is extremely useful for design of hydro turbines and for predicting their performance. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.